There's no doubt that these are uncertain and troubled times, and many people are feeling anxious and afraid. The world offers many solutions to find peace, but true peace, perfect peace, in all circumstances can only be found by placing our hope and trust in God. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. And Psalm 46.10 tells us, Be still and know that I am God. The scriptures remind us to turn to the Lord with music and singing in times of trouble. Psalm 32, 7 says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Psalm 59, 16, 
But I will sing of your strength. In the morning I will sing of your love, for you are my refuge in times of trouble. Do not worry. The Bible says that you and I can find peace with God. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Matthew 6, 25 through 29.
Near to the heart of God, a simple hymn, expresses in a profound way the admonition of James 4, 8, to draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you men of double mind. Yes, wash your hands, but be sure also that your heart is pure. Jesus invites us to approach God the way a child approaches his father. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 19, 14, God invites us to approach him just like a child to his father. The first line of the hymn, Jesus, What a Friend for Sinners, is probably a reference to Luke 7, 34 through 35. The Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you, the Pharisees, you say, look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by all her children. While the Pharisees meant to scoff and accuse, the next story in Luke's gospel illustrates how Jesus 
really is a friend for sinners. A sinful woman anointed Jesus' feet, and her sins were forgiven. Jesus said of her, Therefore I tell you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. Luke 7, 47. Bible says, when you were spiritually dead because of your sins and because you were not free from the power of your sinful self, God made you alive with Christ, and he forgave all your sins. He canceled the debt, which listed all the rules we failed to follow. He took away that record with its rules, and he nailed it to the cross. The Christian life isn't a mistake-free life, but it can be a guilt-free life. God understands your failures, and he loves you anyway. That is God's amazing grace.
You may be at that point today where you're ready to accept Christ as your personal Savior. All you have to do is reach out to Him. His arms are wide open, waiting for you just as you are. He wants to help you to live a better life, a more abundant and full life. Will you invite Him in now? If, if so, just pray a prayer somewhat like this. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I confess my sins to you, and I ask that you forgive me. I confess Jesus as the Lord of my life. I believe in my heart, and I confess with my mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead for my sins. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. And so from Numbers 6, 24 to 26, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. <laughs> 